there is a useful piece of software called MouseSense, which is free. This software uses your webcam to recognize anything that looks kind of like a human face, and then turns relative rotations into mouse movements. It does this with these green little reference points you can see on this doll's head here. So as I turn it slowly to the left, and then to the right, the cursor is moved, and the same with up and down. So this is really useful if you can't move the mouse using normal means. It also has a clicking function that if you hold it still for long enough, it will activate the left mouse click. Additionally, clicking that mouse icon in the top left will give you some other options for clicking. Although I do find that's a bit cumbersome. There are a bunch of advanced settings for it. Generally, it's worth setting the horizontal and vertical sensitivities to be high. The mouse dead zone determines by how much tiny wobbles that it detects from you, which happen naturally as a result of a little brightness change or a little twitch, are reflected in the mouse movement. So if the mouse dead zone is set to 1, it's just constantly doing wobbling, and if the mouse dead zone is large, then it doesn't do so much wobbling, but then also as you start turning your head, it slightly lags behind that, and then you might find it's off-center after a bit. The mouse click time tells you how long you have to hold it still in order to activate the click. Um, in a way this relates to the dead zone, because if you set the dead zone to be very small, then even with a very small click time, you can't hold it still enough to activate it. Here you can see that even though the head isn't moving, it's detecting tiny movements for the cursor. And these tiny movements are larger when you're an actual human face, um, just slightly moving to the left or right. So you'll notice a characteristic wobble when I use this in various games and things. And a very important safety tip, listen to your neck. If you use this for a while and your neck starts hurting, just stop, rest, and come back when your neck feels good again, because creating an injury for the sake of completing a game feels really stupid. It's also worth changing some of the settings on your webcam. I find it's easiest to do this through Skype by going to Tools, Options, Video Settings, Webcam Settings, then Advanced, as well as Device Settings. In Advanced you can see a thing called Automatic Gain Control. Now at the moment the frame rate is 33 per second, and that's really good for making smooth mouse movement. As soon as you activate automatic gain control, it does a lot of brightness balance stuff, but it drops the frame rate significantly. Here you can see it's dropped to 7 per second, and then 5 per second. So as I move my hand around it, and moving the doll's head, the video jumps around a bit. And when it's behaving like that, in mouse sense, it leads to jerky cursor movement, and means you can't ever get the cursor to the right place. So it's just generally worth turning the gain control off and then adjusting the brightness settings so that you can see it properly. I get this particularly because my window faces my webcam, so on a bright sunny day I'd have lots of trouble if I left the gain control on. Another thing I've done which sometimes helps mouse sense behave more naturally is to get a pair of cheap glasses from a pound shop or similar, pop out the lenses and put a load of Tipex dots on it, as you see here. This creates a lot of high contrast reference points for the software. This is easy for people who don't have corrective eyewear. For those who do, this isn't really an ideal solution, as you may need your glasses to look professional. Personally, I don't know if it's feasible to get a second, slightly larger pair of frames to put on at the same time, or how easy it is to make some sort of frame-shaped thing with dots already on it which you can attach with blue tack, and then remove to return the glasses to normal.